wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. I'm Philip Tortevsky, Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and we are Australia's most trusted stock market educators. And every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Dale Gillam. Now, in the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks, and help you become a better trader. Today, we'll unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive into this week's stocks, I am joined today by Dale Gillam. Good afternoon. Good morning, Dale. One or the other. You're a bit confused today, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Very, very good. But I'm actually excited about our market at the moment because it's it seems to be coming off. I mean, we talked about that yep. last week on our market report that we do for TalkingWealth.com that we thought it'd probably come back for one or two weeks. And it looks like it's doing that at the moment. So I'm excited, as they can say. The big Kev used to say, I'm excited. Well, there you go. All right. So let's get straight into it. Now on your screen is a watch list of the top 200 ASX stocks. And um, look, the market obviously is coming off. But what's quite exciting is we are seeing, again, these resource stocks coming through. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, you know, huge volatility through West African, which is not surprising. HMC in a trading halt right now, but you've got Bellevue Gold, Genesis Minerals, some of the gold players starting to pick up. Yeah. And, you know, as we go Pine through- Pinetown, Northern Star, yes. just Regis, it's just a whole heap of them, isn't it? Yeah, and it's not surprising that we do see the heightened volatility when we're talking about stocks like this. But um, on the flip side, we do have mineral resources down 25%. Can I say I'm not surprised? Yeah, you can, because yeah. we've spoken about it so much on this mm. show that, you know, a week doesn't make a reversal. And this is another clear example of why it is not wise to try to pick bottoms of stocks that are in free fall, because you're going to end up more often than not back in the red. Well, we got, I mean, on our live YouTube show, we've mm. had many questions about this over the last month or two. People, and we kept saying, you might be buying into a suckers rally and... It really was, yeah. you know, because they weren't trading on confirmation. But I do, you know, I think, I mean, eventually it's going to find a bottom and do really, really well. But at yeah. the moment, let's stay out of it. But, you know, looking at the, what's going on, you know, Newmont down 16.23%, you know, um, La Vista down at 13.46 and, you know, Reese down 10.76. Nothing there too much that you're not seeing too many of the big stocks in the red and not mm. seeing too many of the big stocks in the green. So nothing's too yes. outrageous for me because I know the big stocks are the ones going to push us back up again and push us right through to Christmas. So I think we're going to have a run right up into Christmas after two to three weeks down, probably to maybe to mid-November uh, and then take off after that. But um, we will cover that in more detail in our market report later. We sure will. And that very much lines up with the US election coming in a couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for that. The volatility should increase around that time as well. So. What is hot in the market this week? Well, on your screen right now is my hot stock tip for the week, which is Bendigo Bank stock ticker code BEN. Now, this one, Dale, obviously- I like you picked this one. Yeah, I mean, we, we've stayed away from the financials. Obviously, the, the financial sector again this week broke through to a new all-time high. So it is humming along. It is keeping within trend, which is very promising. Um, the IT sector actually took a bit of a hit this week, which is quite interesting. It's slowed down, hasn't it? The momentum on that slowed down. It but has. And there's some news coming out of the US, which is um, they're saying right now that uh, the valuations with the tech sector is mimicking what was happening back in 2000 before yeah. the tech uh, crash. I think, I think late November, I think we're going to see some more volatility in that tech sector. Mm. You know? And I'm not going to tell you why, because I'd have to kill you. Well, but please don't do probably that. Probably late November, early December, I think we're going to get some volatility. At the moment, I'm still working out whether it's bullish or bearish, mm. but it's possibly going to be a bit bearish. I think I know what you're talking about. But anyway, let's get back to the <laughs> chart and um, look at Bendigo Bank. Now, I want to start things off on the monthly chart with this one. Obviously, we've marked up some really, really important levels of support and resistance. Obviously, $10.13. Mm. So obvious, so important. Look how the stock has gravitated up and down through this level 
for a very long time, Dale, since oh, 2010. Huge issues. That these second tier banks, you know, because of their funding costs being higher, after yeah, we had the GFC, which is, you know, back through here, they struggle with all of that, you know, the whole changes in mm. the banking system and the whole bit. And obviously then the COVID hit through through here. That was another big hit for them. So I think now's the time they're going to start getting back to their normal trending yeah. behaviour because, you know, we've moved past all of that stuff. At the moment, so I, I do like this, and a couple of the small tier banks I actually do like. Well, the, you're going to find some of that extra value in there relative to well, the big banks flying just keeps going up, yeah. and I mean, people be going, "Well, how far is it going to go? Mm. If I want a bank, let's go for something like this." Yeah, and if we just go back to the chart, you'll see that um, the formation of it since, as you mentioned, coming out of that COVID low, really strong explosive buying, and it's always nice to see when that buying is tested because mm. is it euphoric? Is it speculation? But it got tested held up quite strongly, went for a second bout of it, and now it's holding above this $11.50 level, which was another huge level of resistance back in the 2018 period. So there's one more coming up there, but right now, if you can, I mean, looking at this stock, it's found support on the flip side of that. And moving to the weekly chart real quick, what's also exciting, because it's how trends unfold is is what's important Mm. in terms of whether they're sustainable. We often say, moves up are often accompanied with moves down. That is the, uh, the sign of sustainable trend. And what you're seeing here is a repeat right now of the pattern that formed back in September 2023, which is a nice pattern to unfold when a stock is moving in trend. You see it run up and then find a bit of a pause, accumulate before the next leg. And that's also being accompanied right now with falling volume. Mm, so, it's so nice. all the things lining up quite well with this one to keep it running for the next leg up. So keep that in mind. Well, that is it for my hot stock tip. Now we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution. Elders Limited stock ticker code ELD. Now, this one, Dale, again, I, I keep saying it time and time again, bullish caution. I mean, it's really found a, a, a touch of the $5.41 level and responded very strongly. You can see the nature of these bars that have come through yeah. again. We've had a test of it. And what I really like about this stock right now, it is compressing. And the fact that it is compressing um, gives us that early sign that, hey, it's setting itself up for that next leg up if it is to break out. And I guess the safe option or where uh, traders would be wise to be looking for this one is once it gets back above $10, that's when the real opportunity and confirmation is going to come that the next leg up is coming. So, you know, we've also got on the weekly chart here a break of a long term momentum line. We've tested the line on the flip side, which is always positive as well. And I've marked this rectangle box through here. This shows when the stock gap down. Now, oftentimes when stocks gap down, it's a, a cause for concern, right? Because yeah. obviously um, huge sellings come through. I don't through. do it for no, no reason. No, exactly. But what we've seen with this one or in this example is once we've gapped down uh, on the week of the 17th of April, look how strong it reversed instantly. Reversed straight away, yeah. And not only reversed, found a greens through there, rolled back up and filled this gap now. And whilst we're pulling back, we're still pulling back. We're above these lows through here. So we are in now in this medium to long-term uptrend, albeit we are compressing sideways. So that's the hence the reason for the caution. Mm. But keep this on your watch list because when it breaks back out into trend, it's... Uh, I, look, I think the next two years is setting this this stock is set for that because obviously it works much more in the rural sector. It's financing. If interest rates start coming down, we start getting the economy going yeah. again this will start to benefit from all of that. So I do like your pick, but yeah, I understand why it's the caution. All right. Well, lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? Well, Viva Energy Group, stock ticker code VEA. So let's get straight into it on your screen. Are the charts of VEA? Now, this one is a very interesting proposition. And what I... Yeah, and, and the, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I, you agree. I, I, look, I am a grand because I'm looking at that like, and I'm, I, I did that because I was surprised because I thought this would be okay. Yes, yeah. And I hadn't looked at the chart for ages. And I went, well, okay, now I agree with you. Yes, yeah. And it's, I mean, you know, running really strongly. I mean, you wouldn't have thought that coming back through these periods in July 2024. But what it's done is it's broken through again where this strong buying. Now, when you see blow offs like this, it's either going to be really strong buying that is supported or that euphoric ending to the trend. And it seems that way we've broken through this long-term momentum line as well that supported yeah. this stock for a very long time, very important level. But we are moving our way back to these levels through here and that kind of coincides with the float price. So that's why, hence my interesting uh, proposition right now. And so whilst it's not hot right now, it's also a case of watching this stock because it could find support at $2.58, $2.60. 
But as always, we say time and time on the show, you saw the example with mineral resources. Yes. Wait for confirmation. Yeah, I think if they broke that support line that you've got, then it's definitely hitting $2, yeah. 190 to $2. Mm. That would be my take if it gets through that line. I totally agree. And I've just marked also on the weekly chart, just to for a bit of assistance for anyone watching this. I mean, this could be a nice shorting stock as well. Well, that's what I would do. Yeah. You know, mm. I mean, depending on with your broker and what they're allowing you allowing to do short, yes. but you could probably pick up a CFD on this one and short it quite nicely. Yes, and you've got this beautiful momentum line trailing these highs. I mean, you know, it never ceases to amaze me how simple these techniques are, but how powerful they are in the market. It's about using them in at the right time and knowing exactly how to implement them because really it makes things so clear and so easy to understand. So, and it keeps you safe. Well, they do. And the thing is with what we're teaching people, you know, and how we mentor our traders, I mean, what I find is when people come to us, what they're thinking trading is and should be is a completely opposite of what we're teaching them. Yes. Because they're thinking we should be using all these indicators and we don't. Mm. And, and they think, you know, something like a trend line like you've got on that chart, it's too simple. But there's a lot of complexity in that trend line of how to do it properly because yeah. most people... Nine times out of ten, somebody saying me, tells me they know how to draw a trend line, they're wrong because mm. they don't understand, you know, whereas doing them right is so accurate and really does help you trade stocks a bit better and easier. Too. Easier, yes. You know, you're getting a lot less conflicting signals, which you get from all the other technical indicators that we see all the time. So. Uh, I'd be shorting this stock right now. Absolutely. All right. Well, that is it for Viva Energy. Now, thank you very much for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Remember to tune into the Live Australian Stock Market Show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday night. Now, to find us, just type Wealth Within Live in the YouTube search. And remember to have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your questions. The number is 03-9290-9988. Or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of Dale's first book, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. And I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and thank you, Dale, for your excellent comments today. No, my pleasure. Actually, I forgot to say, we're going to be at the MicroCat conference tomorrow. Yes. And so if people want to get, and it's in Melbourne, Sofidel Hotel, Tuesday and Wednesday, both Phil and I are going to be there. And if people want to come, they can get a discount code. Wow. So to get it a little bit cheaper if you want to go. If you just want to buy us coffee, that's fine. You can do that. Um, sure. For free. We'll have coffee, won't we? Oh, I won't say no. Thank you. <laughs> but thanks again, Dale. And thank you all for watching. For now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading.